Hello, everybody. Hello. Welcome back to another episode of Talking Upstream. My name is Zach, and over there is Dylan, and we are from Nobodies. And what yes. we do here at Talking Upstream, this is a 90-minute writer's room style show where Dylan and I kind of figure out projects. Yeah. Uh, I try to give Dylan something to do, and he teaches me how to do it the right way. Um, you know, I had some like witty banter <laughs> before I was going to uh, come on here, but that dude, that song, that opening theme song is so cool, man. I I, I dig it. It's uh, pumped up every time. Yeah. So special thanks to Jared Gleason for making that song. Uh, it's called Quantum Realm. It is uh, an amazing song and he made it for us and it's yeah, very, very cool. Oh, yeah. Um, but yeah, we'll skip the banter part. Dylan, how are you, sir? Uh, I'm doing okay. Nothing yeah. Too, yeah. Uh, nothing too crazy going on right now. What about yourself? Yeah, I'm doing okay. I was doing some research on like new and upcoming streaming services to so try to see like, hey, if we had to sell one of these shows to yeah. somebody. Um, and I think that the one that's looking for the most content is Food Network, uh, that that channel. Uh, tell me, Zach, have you ever been involved in the restaurant industry in any capacity? You know, as a matter of fact, Dylan, and thank you for asking, I of have been. Uh, I did uh, run a bunch of restaurants for quite a while. And okay. um, yeah, I I'm well versed in the restaurant industry. But my question is, Dylan, if we had to make a show for Food Network, what would you make? Did you ever watch that card that anime called Fighting Foodons? No. It was like Pokemon, but instead of capturing Pokemon, you fight food dishes. Okay. There was a plate. There was like a sword guy with a plate of spaghetti for a head. I'd bring it back. Dark and gritty. Zack Snyder. Oh, that sounds great. Mm -hmm. uh, all right. Well, I guess that I will respond to Food Network and pitch that idea. So that's cool. Yeah. Um. But They're anyway, hungry for content. do you want to tell everyone who's watching what today's show is going to be about? Yes. So this is Talking Upstream. Uh, traditionally, we start off with an interview with a fellow uh, podcaster, member of the uh, this frontier of new entertainment. So uh, please welcome right now Tina Marie Trimper and Robert Trimper of the Psychedelic Podcast and the Indie Podcast Summit or Indie Pods United. <laughs> oh. <laughs> uh, I'm going to get that right one of these days. That's okay. Everybody calls it the psychedelic podcast, but I put a hyphen there for a reason. So I always tell people it's psyche hyphen delic podcast. Not to, I'm not being mean. But no, that's and we are one podcaster. We, we collectively <laughs> are one, and Zach is now a, a piece of our part. I'm Difficult a part to work with. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, yeah. So technically, now I am two parts of. Two, one different uh i don't know how that works because uh, i yeah I'm, I'm two different collectives but just parts of that it's uh, complicated you're a spoke. yeah that's cool um so <laughs> uh, psychedelic podcast for yeah. those who don't know it for whatever reason because you guys are superstars in a podcast world what is psychedelic podcast and where can people find you the psychedelic podcast is basically a place where somehow we're funny but we talk about deep and important subjects and Things that people don't generally talk about, like lucid dreaming and what you actually came up with. The whole Santa conspiracy stuff was just on point with exactly what we want to do. And uh, we're only 45 episodes in and exponential growth. It's like, couldn't be happier with everybody in the community. It's great. And then I did create the Indie Pods United Summit. But you can find that at IndiePodsUnited.com. And you can also stream us on Spotify, Apple. I don't want to be one of those people. I hate saying that. Wherever you get like your podcasts you from. Get them from. I hate that. Yeah, just go to, <laughs> just type my name in. Tina Marie yeah. Trimpert. Like Trim Pert. And you'll find everything. <laughs> Uh, yeah, you, no, you, you need to be one of those kind of people, especially on a show like this, you know, talking upstream is on IBM TV, which is international broadcast media. So this goes around the world and some people don't have uh, certain podcast apps. So uh, it, it's okay to sell yourselves. That's fine. You gotta, you gotta get out. <laughs> there. Well, um, as long as we're not selling teeth. 
uh, inside joke to our last episode. Check I'm it out. Sorry. I can't help we'll it. I, I will. I will. I will sell teeth in a heartbeat. Dylan, would you sell your teeth? <laughs> I don't see why not. If someone Thanks. wants to buy it, free market, baby. If someone wants to buy it, why not? See, Each told down. you. Yeah, that's what I was like. Um, okay, so we're going to go ahead and start this interview now, which is a great segue. Uh, oh, um, so okay, so, yeah, thank you. Uh, well, maybe we can edit that out. Uh, so talking upstream, what we do here is we try to create stuff to sell it. Well, what we're trying to do is sell ourselves out to a streaming service, sell content to somebody that wants it, um, sell our teeth, anything that we really can do. But that would be like the pinnacle of what this show is, the apex. <laughs> Money, right? If you guys had to... Uh, kind of uh quantify what the pinnacle of psychedelic podcast is like if you had to reach that ultimate like i have endless money what that ultimate goal would be what would you say it is i honestly just want to keep pushing out great content and honestly that's really it i do it because i love doing it i do it we do it because it's fun we love to do it we love the community but we started funny story he never wanted to podcast I can, nah. I was going to write a blog. Well, and I ended up podcasting. We we just moved. We just moved here to to Texas, and it was just a random idea. We had all these moving arrangements and all these pieces that had yet to come together. She was like, "I'm gonna start a podcast." I was like, N "No, the f you're not." Like, I, I was kind of <laughs> mean about it. I think I was in a bad mood at the he moment. He was driving. He's and like, "You're I kidding me, right?" Well, there's so much going through my head. We had so much going on. And I was like, why, why are you trying to add this to, to our brains? Like, there's no, that's so random. Like, I didn't know anything about it. I was like, that's effing stupid. And then she did it. And I'm I'm very glad she didn't listen to me. I, I'm glad too. And I generally don't listen. <laughs> <laughs> well, I do, but you just don't know I am. It's true. <laughs> now, about your podcast, 45 episodes. That's awesome. I'm not sure if Dylan and I have gotten to 45 episodes of any of our shows so far. I've counted uh, collectively we've hit 45 i think yeah across um, everything. now of the 45 what would you say is your favorite or the one that stands out the most hmm. oh those are two very different questions so favorite and stands out the most yeah hmm. well, i'll do i'll do stands out the most i wish i had a list a visual because i'm forgetting a lot you, I, I think that the, the one that out. I enjoyed the most was with a fellow uh, actress and film director, Benjamin T. Wilson, mm. and my friend Jess Paul. So we talked about chess, and we talked about the human mind and the different parts of it, but we were also talking about their new film, Galatea, which is super cool, and that stood out the most to me because she is the reason that I am actually doing live streams now. She was like, why are you doing just an audio podcast? Why are you not showing your face? Because you know, maybe I got tired of showing my face all the time in the acting and modeling industry and I took a break and now I'm back. And you could do favorite. Well, yeah. that one's not my favorite. Maybe it's because I wasn't in it. You but... didn't have to see that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm just kidding. That that was a that was a great episode. Definitely one of the best. I, I wanna say that our psychic abilities, lucid dream and lucid dreams and astral projection or MK Ultra, sorry. Yep. Is my favorite. It's it's kind of a throwback, but it was like a the classic like staple of what we were trying to go for as, as far as like controversy. Mm -hmm. And I got to talk about the catcher in the rye CIA conspiracy, which I oh, don't yeah. to. That's a fun one. Was, yeah, well, <laughs> I, I was I was I was given like a five minute block to elaborate on that and articulate <laughs> that the way I've always wanted to to people when I try to explain it, and I just felt like I did it so perfectly and yeah. All around my favorite episode. And our sponsor actually is a celebrity psychic and medium that's read over 200,000 people. Uh, Maybe 30,000. 30, 30, 30, I'm people. bad with numbers. Yeah, it doesn't matter. I like how it says <laughs> one, two, three. That's very easy for me right there. I'm yeah. Whiteboard. I'm going to keep it very easy. Just for you. Uh, yeah. Uh, wait, so she, she read over 30,000. He read over 30,000. He, poems? No. At, at one time. I can read read reading Collectively. <laughs> yes. Oh, okay. Collectively, he's, he's um, given readings. Connects, uh, connects to loved ones that have passed and also will yeah. tell you your future. And it, mm -hmm. it can go up for an hour and it has yeah. almost a 100% accuracy rate. And he does these things called arty parties, which I think is really funny. Yeah, it's it's not tarot card readings. He, re yeah. he no, It's reading from the mind and from his pendulum. Yeah. Connects to their deceased relatives mainly. 
His oh. name Artie Hoffman. Shout I've out. done streams. Shout out Artie Hoffman. Yeah. <laughs> Let's say his name. You can check his streams <laughs> out because we actually read people together at the same time, and he got mm -hmm. all of my friends. I popped the comments up, and he got all of it right. Oh, cool. Has he been on your show? Was he a guest on your show? Yeah, he's yeah twi he, twice. He's going to be coming on every month. He was uh, he was with us on the at the convention too. Oh, cool. Oh, right on. Mm -hmm. Oh, that convention. That was a cool time. I, I had a really good time on that thing. You guys were uh, on, like, you were on, I almost said something that I maybe not have, should have said. On fleek, I was hoping you no, would no, not no. go I almost, there. I almost turned it into a, a drug joke. <laughs> because you were moving so fast. Oh, oh dude. I see. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we, were, we, were very, we were very nervous. <laughs> you were speedy. You were speedy. You, you, like, were, like, you were on, you were, writing. you were on time constraint. You were yeah. on fleek. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, we felt it because, you know, normally our show is 90 minutes and we just kind of take our time and leisurely get to the end of a, a, some kind of story or, or project. Yeah. But we're like, oh, my God, 30 minutes. Like, we got to cut it down. <laughs> I, I was wondering, like, is this always this way? Like, I, I mean, sometimes, but not, not normally. rapid fire at that point. That was a good one. Yeah, that was a good one. Oh, it was too con it was too consistent to be on what she insinuated. <laughs> like, <laughs> you guys were definitely um, – Naturals at that. It was really oh, fun to watch Zach almost die from hot sauce too. <laughs> oh yeah. yeah, that was that was a very weird day for me. Uh, started off weird. <laughs> <That's crazy>. um, <laughs> so if if you guys had to have like an ultimate guest for your show, like a like a perfect guest, who would you pick? Celebrity guest. It's me. You on your own show? Yeah, it's always going like to be me. like I'm a just... clone or an alternate universe version. Uh, or... actually, okay. We did have her clone on an episode. It's yeah. funny you say that. I got to don't interview. I got don't to interview her don't, clone. <laughs> don't talk about my clone like that. <laughs> so you guys are just talking just any celebrities, whoever you want. Whoever. Okay. Uh, I don't like celebrities. I I really like Idris Elba for some reason. I'll, I I'll just him. go with him. Yeah, well, he's gorgeous, so it makes sense. Someone that worked with him uh, played his wife in Co Concrete Cowboy. I believe it's on Netflix now. Mm -hmm. Her name's Liz Priestley. She's an amazing actress. Mm -hmm. Very good, nice person. Still friends. So if you could have anybody on your show, you would pick Idris Elba. <laughs> not, not, it's not a bad, it's not a bad guess. Can they well, be dead or can they be dead people? It, it, uh, has, it has nothing to do with the, the psyche. Well, actually, you know what? We could talk about his show, Luther. And, <gasps> and, and um, I would have Da Vinci. Yeah. Mm, that, that'd be a good one, too. I would. Uh, which one? Her. Da Vinci. Da Vinci's demons, the actor. Leonardo, no, the actual. Oh, Leonardo, okay. Oh, real, actual Da Vinci. Real yeah. Da Vinci. Okay, real Da Vinci. Okay. Not, not Ralph, not Ralph Da Vinci. <laughs> there is, is no that, other Da Vinci to me. But there's this guy, Ralph Da Vinci, who sells pizza over here in this plaza by the uh, thrift shop. He's a he's, EB second. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, he's got some cool drawings. That's about it. Uh, <laughs> the pizza uh, is really tight. No. <laughs> that's true. Now, when getting into podcasts, did you have like uh, any influences or was there a podcast that you listened to that you're like, oh, this is kind of what I want to do? Like, uh, yeah. No, I, I didn't listen to any podcasts. I really like Bill Burr. He's where I get my inspiration I from hate that, when it comes to humor. That he likes that. He, he's a little bit too much sometimes, but but he's most loud. of the time, most of the time he's he's really funny. Not saying that that's my type of humor, but <laughs> just his 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 content is has inspired which has nothing to do with podcasting i didn't listen to podcasts at all before here don't knock into the mic honey okay, okay babe sorry <laughs> well i just do not want to sound like bait like go beethoven on you guys well not that no, i that's okay i mean honestly you sound like me and dylan when we're doing our stuff i'm like babe please stop knocking <laughs> into the mic. and he's like a little oh, yep. a little <laughs> tap <laughs> Um, one question we like to ask people because, uh, they usually have some kind of cool story. And I did ask this to you on, on your show. Um, but I think that you will have a different answer, which might also be very cool, but it seems like everyone has their celebrity interaction where they're in a airport or they're somewhere and they have that cool connection with the celebrity, whether they talk to them or not. Um, do you guys have any, uh, celebrity interaction stories that you would like to talk about? Yeah. So like you said, you did ask that question. <laughs> All of these questions. No, um, I can't count. honestly think of uh, one of my favorite celebrity interactions. I guess, you know, I'm just going to go ahead and say it again. Uh, when I was in Raleigh with Rihanna and Kanye and Chris Brown and everybody else, actually, I had missed a couple people that were in that group. There was NERD and Lupe Fiasco, too. 
And oh. we were all just eating cantaloupe and hanging out. <laughs> and Chris Brown was playing basketball. He was re- like kind of ignoring everything. Was he They good? were all riding around on bicycles. They had their giant RVs. I didn't pay attention. Could he dunk? Uh, I did not pay any attention. <laughs> and then they had like these cute little bikes. And I shook Connie's hand and moved along with my business with the cantaloupes. The plot thickens. I'm not going to say mine because they were really lame. And I made like four <laughs> football references and didn't realize until after. And I was like, wow, that was very excessive. <laughs> oh, um, Chad Michael Murray. I worked with him on One Tree Hill for a little bit. Mm. Yeah, well, I was just an extra. But it was he was nice to me, so it was fine. It's good. Yeah. Well, we were all extras on One Tree Hill at one point or another. I mean, yeah. that's, that's huge. <laughs> it's like, it's like it's Law and like, Order. Everybody's been on it. <laughs> yeah, at least one of the nine Law and Orders. Uh, Dylan, I'm talking a lot. Do you have any questions that you would like to ask our friends? <laughs> well, Rob, you mentioned Bill Burr as an inspiration. Do you guys t- pull inspiration from any other particular source? Is there someone that you really kind of aspire to be an equal to? Or do you just kind of pull from uh, various sources as you f- see fit? That what you the second thing you said. Yeah. I'm kind of weird because I I don't have particular consistent interest that I always can go to for inspiration. It's um it's kind of like whatever I'm interested at the time. Yeah. And I'm also I don't watch a lot of TV. I don't watch a lot of movies. I don't listen to many podcasts. Not because I'm an a hole. Just because I like to read books. I like to, I don't know. We have a daughter. I'm busy. It's just, I don't really pull my inspiration from much of anywhere besides like our souls internally, like my spiritual self. You know, I don't like to get it externally anywhere else. I'll just come up with a, I ran, sometimes I plan and I make a whole outline. Sometimes I just go 30 minutes before this is what we're talking about. And then I'll be like, Hey, you, can you come, come talk about sleep deprivation with us? Yeah, and just, it just happens. I, I feel like I could fo- I could pull the the best inspiration from inside of myself. I feel like that's where you come up with with your true self and your true potential. And yeah, so I I try to focus on that more. And I don't really I don't really see it outside of myself too much. Yeah, because you kind of have like crazy stories that just pop into our heads all the time that have actually they're not really stories. It's real life experiences. And then we pull from that, basically. And one day, like, we'll be triggered by a memory and be like, oh, yeah, lucid dreaming. Last thing, not not to be too long winded about it, (laughs) which means I'm being long winded about it. But um, I don't know. In 2020, you don't see a lot of authenticity out out there. So, and, and there's a lot of censorship. There's a lot of you know misinformation. A lot of sh- shallow content out there. So, I just I don't know where I would find it. Even you know. Yeah. Yeah. So. I have podcasts that I listen to, and they're they're mostly my friends, and they're good quality indie podcasts. I really do love the indie podcast world. Mm-hmm. I don't like listening to major people everybody talks about you know that one name the jr mm-hmm. that, that one makes me mad <laughs> it's oprah for dudes yeah <laughs> yeah dude, yeah dude oprah that's funny it's um weird. so i have a story where i punched a llama in the face and i don't really want to talk about it is there anything that you guys uh will not talk about on your show or is there any topics that you really will not bring up we kind of bring up everything, but not in a sense where it's outwardly what we're talking about. It generally just happens within conversation, but it'll never be the title or be in the description. If you're listening, you catch on to those things. I'm very particular about not bringing up certain subjects like religion or politics and making something all about that. At one time, I got bullied for not doing something based on one of those two topics. So (laughs) I, you know, there's not really anything we won't touch on because the psyche is the human mind. Everything that we talk about is psyche related. And I mean, even what we did the other day, Zach, that's that's psyche based because we were thinking about these things. All of it, everything that everyone does actually is based on the psyche. So why not? Yeah, Yeah, like how you asked us one of your interview questions on our show about, you know, what was, what was traumatizing to you? It's stuff usually doesn't come up for me unless it, unless we're talking about something and it happens because I, I I have a hard time recollecting things like on the spot because I've 
been through so many experiences like we all have. Yeah. Um, so things just kind of come up. They may come up randomly at uh, any I time may, in the I day. Remember for and I'll just be like, whoa, I haven't, I don't, I haven't remembered that since like eight years ago. And, and it's like one of the craziest things that's ever happened. But, um, yeah, so I don't know. I, like, I pissed in somebody's football helmet in high school. Oh, yeah. That's what came to my mind. I think about this all the time, And I'm not actually. proud of it. It's, it's really, really screwed up. So that's I, their trauma. And I'm embarrassed <laughs> for my actions. But, yeah, I pissed in his helmet, and then he and then he wore it to practice. To practice? No, it's not. No. And, no. you know, mixed with the sweat in his hair. and it's, it, was just, it was just a disgusting act. But that, nice. that's, the, that's what came to my head. That's what I thought of. He was a bully. No, that Not he really. that pro- person probably deserved it. That's fine. They didn't, but oh, okay. Well, then, yeah, you're a bully. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, here, honey, I'm don't sorry. spit into the mic. There was no spit. <laughs> <laughs> um, hey, hon, Dylan, do you have any questions? <laughs> give me, give me just a second. I was updating the notes so that I can note that we are now pro bully. Apparently, <laughs> he was ignoring us. No, we're not pro bully. <laughs> We have a bully on the show, Zach. We were pro ex bullies that turned their life around and started podcasts. Okay, so, I was I was a moderate bully that, and I'm ashamed of it. I was the opposite of that. I was really nice to everybody, but I would make sideways bully comments to my actual friends. You know what? And and it, the bullying is is out of probably trauma. Bullying is not okay. So you know, it's not. It's the opposite of being oh, I'm so I'm big and bad. It's because. It's because you're the we- probably the weaker one person. Rob, so long as you can justify it, I don't think anyone's going to hold that against you. <laughs> Tina, I also like that your idea of the opposite of bullying is just to bully quietly. <laughs> <laughs> but bully to your friends because, yeah. you know, you could totally shape, make fun of your friends. See, that's fun. Sure, yeah. I mean, I would think the opposite of bullying would be getting bullied, but uh, I guess bullying quietly is probably <laughs> Yeah, bullying with slight words is okay. Yeah. It's a spectrum. It's not it's not binary, Zach. It's a spectrum. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. You keep teaching me about these spectrums. I get it. Um, <laughs> I talk about spectrums all the time. <laughs> uh okay, so uh I uh, one last question, uh, which is gonna be a stupid one before we get on to what we're doing. But um, you know, I, I talk a lot and I would like people to start asking Dylan more questions. So will you guys ask Dylan a an interview question, uh just to put him yeah. on the spot because he doesn't really get to talk a lot. <laughs> Go for it. Can I ask? Absolutely. So, Dylan, mm-hmm. you, you do a great job keeping uh, Zach in his place, as he has said so many times. And where, how long have you been friends? And where did you come up with the concept of some nobodies? Oh, um, well, I've never been asked that. No, um, no, Zach and I met. This would have been. Was this the end of 2018? It must have been. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, I work customer service. I've worked in a grocery store for a while. Zach uh, came in a few months after his partner and I've been friends with his partner for a little while. He comes in and we kind of immediately latch on to there's sometimes there's an aura among people who have very similar taste in pop culture and people who take it seriously. And like Zach has tattoos and I'm pretty open about what I do as far as that goes. So we would get into these topics about pop culture that were a little deeper than other ones. And he one of the things that I kind of latch on to is when people are able to identify who makes a specific work of pop culture. Like he would mention that some of his favorite movies were Kevin Smith movies. Um, I almost said Kevin James because I almost make that mistake <laughs> all the time. But you're better than that. And Kevin I Spacey. Um, <laughs> at a certain point, that was okay. Uh, and then everything came to life. No, um, we realized that we were aligned on a lot of how we view media and kind of creation and stuff. Cool. And he had been bringing up this idea of like getting people together and doing stuff. So we pulled in a few people. We had a few false starts. We had people kind of come in and leave. And throughout it, Zach and I kind of meshed very well in our discussion as to what we were trying to do and what we wanted to do with it as an end goal. My, I have a creative writing degree um, and I have a novel that I've written and among various other technical writing stuff. So I've always wanted to create fiction professionally and Zach kind of came in with the same goal and he realized that I had a background in film study and creative writing. And so we got together and we kind of pitched around a few ideas, realized that we didn't quite have the technical prowess. We didn't might need to do something. So we started podcasting and um, it's been 
all downhill since then. <laughs> in like in like a in like a bicycle manner, so it's easier. Oh, I thought it was like falling down. No, definitely not. That definitely wasn't just a recovery right there. <clears throat> Out of morbid curiosity, I, I actually watched some of your earlier streams and compared them to the ones that you did recently, and it was a bit, a, very much an uphill. Uh, yeah, up, you, you did upstream yourselves. And we're good. definitely we're definitely learning as we go. Uh, yeah. But yeah, uh, yeah uh, good good question because yeah, it, oh. it, it was it was cool. I went to Dylan one time and I was like, "Hey, man, like." Ugh, what do you think about these robots? <laughs> and uh, and then immediately we're like, okay, let's just start writing this thing about these robots. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, and the, Dylan and I have created like a, a, a seventy eight shows already now. I think. What? Oh, they're not fully, you know, done. But <laughs> no, we have, no, we've done a, we've Concept. done uh, about seventy eight uh, uh, published podcasts. I think we're at now. <laughs> I think we're yeah, almost in the three digits. Um, I have. Do you get overwhelmed ever? Dylan does all the time. <laughs> my secret, is that, thing my secret that is that I'm always overwhelmed. No, um, I <laughs> I thrive I thrive with a really tight deadline and a really full schedule. So if I know that I have to get something done, I'll get it done. Um, like we're working, we're wrapping up the uh, draft right now on this. Um, it's a project we're doing, just like a choose your own adventure podcast. I know it's so and, cool. I checked out the trailer. Oh, good. Um, but we've been the we had the idea about two weeks ago, and over the past <laughs> week, I mean, kind of, right? I don't know. I don't, when, I, I don't cool. know when we actually had the idea, um, but I've put like knowing that we're we're trying to get this out as soon as possible, and it's been I've been writing for about a week now, and I've put down about ten thousand words, so. Having like a deadline that I'm trying to really hit really kind of puts a fire under my butt. Yeah, that's great. Some people just have that natural ability and to work under pressure is better. Honestly, mm -hmm. I'm, I can completely understand why. Because some people take years to write a book, but they have a very specific one topic that they want to write about that topic and it has to be perfect. But having a million unperfect ideas and expanding on that is actually the way to go. Yeah, I pretty much wake up every morning and shoot Dylan about six text messages of ideas that are probably too stupid. He yeah. responds to zero of them, and then I ask when we can hang out and work on something. So <laughs> then I <respond>. <laughs> okay, so now I see what, what Zach got that from you, Dylan, because the other morning, I'm pretty oh. sure I messaged Zach about an idea I had, and it was like this long. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> Wait, Zach, are you texting other people in the morning? Wait a minute. Uh, hey, uh, when that's got to get cut. If you can cut that out, that'd be cool. That's not. I've already cool. seen it. No, no, no. We know about this. Uh, I send you all the screenshots, Dylan. Like I do any conversation. With <laughs> <I know. laughs> Uh, yeah, all right, well, let's let's get on to our show real fast. I don't want to take up too much of you yeah, guys' time. Sorry. Yeah, was, uh, no, so, no, don't apologize. This is never awesome. apologize for anything. Yeah, I'm especially, not sorry. On, especially on this show. Um, but. Uh, please go check out Psycho Dog Podcast everywhere you listen to anything. Um, Psyche. Yeah, Psyche, Psyche Dog. That's, that's Psyche. what I. No, that's what I said. I must have. <laughs> I think I hit like a chord or something, and then I, I, think I so. raised an octave. Yeah, I, I have this cat that's getting sick everywhere. So who knows? Oh. Uh, <laughs> it's okay. It's my daughter's cat, so it's no big deal. There we um, go. Okay, so Dylan, what is this show about? So talking upstream for those of you who are just now tuning in somehow or haven't been paying attention until this moment, is a 90-minute writer's room style show. We keep saying that, but we never actually write much. Uh, I, write. Where, I write. No, I'm, I'm – it's whatever. I'm not going to explain my joke. Um, where Zach <laughs> and I, and usually a guest, we uh, come to the table with an idea, or two ideas, one idea each. We're going to pitch one idea. They're going to choose, and they haven't heard these yet. We're going to spend the rest of the time we have, roughly about half, uh, roughly about an hour, Spinning this out into something that can be further developed down the line. Uh, something that we can build on and eventually, ideally, sell to any one of these uh, streaming services, which are actually just cable networks that tricked us into paying more for less service. But, um, yeah, so, Zach, do we want to bring ideas up? Yeah, absolutely. 
Um, so normally what we do is we bring uh, the idea that did not win or did not get selected from last week. But before the show, Tina uh, was very clear that we do talk about resurrections a lot. So we're not going to do one of those two. Uh, <laughs> so D- Dylan, Dylan, whatever idea you pitch today, it, it cannot have resurrections in it. Just so do you we know. talk about oh. resurrections a lot? Necromancy. Apparently we talk about resurrections a lot. <laughs> Okay. Uh, so we're not going to resonate anyone this week. No, I don't um, have a problem with it. I just, I was making, you know, I was making an observation. Hey, no, that's totally cool. And I appreciate you, it. You um, change the outcome by observing it, Tina. That's how this works. Yeah. <laughs> we, we are Schrodinger's cat at all times. Um, okay. So the idea that I came up with that I would like to explore, and it comes from kind of an idiom, but the idea of a, of a soulmate. And I think it would be a cool idea that if you could communicate with your soul like if your soul had its own personality and if your soul was attracted to somebody else's soul but you as a person hated that other person but your souls were connected okay. so it's a soulmate uh without your bodies liking each other or or your enemies or whatever so, so that so your soulmate is someone you can't stand and you have to come around to it or yeah, the, the person that your soul is mated to is someone who you just cannot get along with or do not or have not or something. Either way, your soul likes something else that you don't like. Okay. So that's the one idea. That's one idea. Okay. That's one idea. We're going to go, yeah, I'm just going to call it soulmate. Because I can, right. yeah, I'm glad I shut up and asked that question. Because I was going to keep talking. <laughs> Ooh, you're a little blurry. Is that me or you? That's oh. him. Oh, wow. Super, super blurry. Is it the cat? Like, let me just... <laughs> Just kidding. Yeah, I don't, I don't know what's yeah, going on. Right. My vocals on. Maybe like. Yeah. Oh, there you go. That happens. That's all you have to do. Your auto focus somehow messed up. Hey. Huh. I don't know. Okay. How do you? Yeah. Okay. Well, I don't know how to turn auto focus off. Huh. Go to um, your camera settings and well, then switch it off. It's too late because you're in StreamYard. Yeah, I, we're just gonna have to go with this fuzzy <laughs> yeah. for a second until it, I guess, <laughs> fixes itself. up to the camera. It's really not quick. that bad. No. It, it'll it'll it's fix just, itself. It's it's yeah. like a it's like a oh. it's like an aura. It's like a nimbus. Yeah. Well, I do kind of hate it, but whatever. Uh, all right, so, so oh. soulmate. The, this what what this says is soulmate. Okay. Soulmate. <laughs> yeah. It's okay, you're just gonna have to transcribe it. <laughs> all right. No problem. Dictate whatever the opposite of. I don't know. Abandon that line of thought. My idea. Let's get back to the show. My idea. Um, so this is a little relevant to who we have on right now. Um, we've been talking about doing something a little more horror based, uh, potentially involving this whole podcast community that we've kind of fallen into. Okay. No, I see what you're doing. Uh, so this is really this is really basic, and I don't have anything developed beyond this initial concept. Uh, there's a whole bunch of people streaming some sort of collective thing. And one of them is known for doing either true crime or something like that. They get killed on stream and people have to figure out whether it is part of their gig or if it is like an actual authentic crime being committed on camera. Okay. So, so a, so almost a multi podcast, true crime. Yeah. Mystery thing. Either a true crime mystery or like a publicity stunt this person is putting on without telling people. This sounds familiar. Yeah. <laughs> oh, wow. This is hard because I like both of them. Okay, so what this, <laughs> what this blur says right here is true crime pod because uh, we're just going to figure that out. So. Trevor. Oh, ooh, it was oh. moving. It was yeah, changing. It, there we go. Uh, Something's happening. Uh, here we go. <laughs> See, this is so great that we're live that stuff like this can happen because this is actual comedy that people you can't write this kind of stuff. No, uh, no one would have thought. Oh, just blur it somehow. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. Sure. Just whatever. Go like this. It's all censored. We're censoring. It, it okay. I hate it. I gotta figure it out. But we'll this do that. Is really, 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 really a tough one because like this might be my my last chance with Dylan to talk about the one that looks familiar, but yes. it's not. <laughs> No, is it? Okay. Don't, don't you pull that curtain back. <laughs> what if we combine the two? Oh, 
again? Uh, that's okay. So <laughs> well, how is that no. complex if your soul hates your that it's other? It's not complex. And but... then it becomes true crime because well, you killed the soul. There's only there, there's not there's only like one obvious option there to to take it. No, there. I like both of them. I want to combine them. No, that's what I'm saying. If we combine them, yeah, okay, like the cool. plot twist sure. would be like obvious. Okay. <laughs> so once again, we're gonna combine them. Okay, so <laughs> oh, once again. <laughs> well, this happened to us before, and it was uh, uh, a previous yeah. episode. The guy showed he he threw us a curveball and combined the two. It worked out pretty well. Yeah, you threw me a curveball with that. Well, I, that's what that's what the show's about. The show's about curveballs because we yeah. we're going we to have a sports fan on here. I, I want a knuckleball. <laughs> <laughs> it's not often that Dylan and I get to talk to sports fans, so uh, <laughs> curveballs and <laughs> sports sports terms. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Curveball. So Dylan, <laughs> yes, we have a multi-podcast true crime mystery that okay. also involves the idea of soulmates. Okay. So, this is going to be probably an audio okay. drama, right? I think we should make this an audio drama since we actually haven't done one of those on here, I don't think, uh, except for Super Empowered. One of our first episodes. Yeah. Well, except people have to go back and find that. It's an Easter I know. egg. It's not an All Easter right. egg. It's just an old episode. It is an Easter egg. <laughs> I have to find the exact sentence that it happens. You got to find it. You're going to be uh, monetized within two days. Okay. <laughs> Okay, Dylan. So I know that this is not a hundred percent your idea. Um, it was one that uh, it, it came to you yeah. pretty quickly. Yeah. Um, but so if we have a multiple podcast thing, right? We have a, a bunch of different podcasts. Uh, we also need one linear storyline going throughout all of them. Now, how do we get the soulmate to fit into that? Now, is this like are they two different podcasts that separated for some reason, and that's why they can't talk to each other? Potentially, um, I think the first thing we need to decide is how supernatural this is going to be because the soulmate idea feels like there is at least something supernatural happening in that world. Okay, yeah, go ahead, Tina. It doesn't start out supernatural, it starts out completely innocent. They're just trying to do this audio drama, and there's a, just well, I mean, I think we should maybe start out with only like four people involved, so maybe, yeah, they did split up their podcasts and. They're still trying to work it out together and what have you, but it starts to become a little bit supernatural in a sense because they start feeling like perhaps Jupiter is rising and it's the age of Aquarius and everything like that. It's in retrograde. Big full moon, Mercury's in retrograde. So, so much is happening right now. And like, what's what's that? What's that cartoon choice based video game? The Wolf Among Us. Can it be a, a fairy tale theme? Because that seems a lot more interesting than Where's just real crime people. Talking about fables. Yeah. Fables. Yeah. That's the word I was looking for. Yeah, fables. Yeah. Okay. Oh, maybe we are in a in a world like that, and where there still are true crime podcasts. Yeah, like you know, Snow White has a. There's podcast. actually a werewolf. They can still have podcasts, even yeah. though fables. The werewolf is the soulmate. He different love it in the character. Different idea. We do true crime style podcast tellings of fairy tales. Okay. I, I, I like know. I like a, I like a fictional universe uh podcast yeah. in there. I'm I'm into that. That's kind of cool. We've never um, done that before. Good. Just on, just right. on now, out there. The way you said that made it sound facetious, and I'm not sure if I you, saw his face. That's yeah. just that's just my natural tone of voice, Zach. You know I, me. I do the same thing. You fall into facetiousness normally. Yeah. <laughs> no, same. you don't. Yeah, Wait, you have, have we multiple have we, done, have we done fictional podcasts before? No, not on this show, at least. I don't think we have. Yeah, no. I don't think you have either. Yeah, it's based on everything. I think I Dylan likes it. It, it didn't. Too. It didn't come off sarcastic to me. It just it came off. It. No, I, I don't think I, Rob is understanding the joke. I, I, it's I'm, okay. I'm right here with you guys. We don't. Okay, get so, we don't. Uh, we're gonna start. We're gonna start with four shows, uh, and then and we're gonna. That's how we pop into this universe, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so it's four podcasts that are going to be. Um, in a fictionalized universe, yeah. and they are going to be true crimes. And I'm assuming the two of them have to be the soulmates. That just seems to make sense. Yeah. Right. Yeah. All right. So, Dylan, what what are some what are some fictional shows that you would like to explore in this fictional universe? Uh it's a good question. Yeah. Um, I know. Well, T Tina Marie, she said werewolf, right? 
Sure. So maybe there's like a, maybe there's like a, 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 a podcast where werewolves are doing like astrological signs or horoscopes because of moon stuff. Yeah. Uh, All right. So werewolf, go- werewolf horoscopes. It's uh, they do. They just do a lycanthrope community show. Yeah. Oh, I have yeah. one. I have one. Okay. This is Dylan's part. In in uh, in, sl- in sleeping as Sleeping Beauties are waiting to be resurrected. I know we said we weren't going to do that. Um, she's she's trying to figure out how to astral project so that she's not just unconsciously useless. Um, what what does that podcast sound like? <laughs> I imagine she's set, she's um, up in her bedroom. She's speaking she's from her sleeping. soul. She's sleeping, but she's able. Someone, her soulmate, is able to hear her thoughts, so she can continue to podcast. Oh, so the soul is of a passed out person. <laughs> <laughs> well, she's still got a brain. It's still yeah. working. No, okay. That's, okay. Her brain is more beautiful than her actual face in this universe. Yeah. Sure, I just always have a problem with dudes that kiss sleeping girls to wake them up and and fall in love with them. That just seems well, kind of creepy. Not going that that route, does, it doesn't exactly. have to go there. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so we have a uh, Sleeping Beauty who's doing an astro plane uh, kind of deal. We have uh, werewolves doing horoscopes, which I think is cool. Um, what are some other fictional podcasts here? I want to see a villain podcast. All the villains get together and talk about their schemes or something. Okay, what what is what's the podcast about? Um, it would probably be hosted by Gaston or whoever the equivalent <laughs> is. Gaston. And- guest on um and i don't know who else would be his like co-host Maybe Fro- jafar jafar or frollo from uh, Hunchback. whatever you want <laughs> and uh they probably have rotating villains on to talk about their schemes and how things went wrong <laughs> and, how, and how bad their sequels were Yes. How <laughs> if, if they come to you with a contract for a straight to video sequel you don't sign it so, so it's Gaston and Jafar uh, movie reviews. Oh, yeah, they're bad Try, at it. Trying to figure out how to catch a W for once. All right, cool. <laughs> uh, we're going to wind up Ursula, though. Disney. Yeah, I know. Uh, sure. what, 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 what's one more podcast until we kind of hop into the main story of this? I mean, uh, no, we, have, we have Sleeping Beauty, who's the soulmate, and she's the one who's passed out. What would be the, the, <laughs> the, the, the mate of Sleeping Beauty that when, just does not make sense? When we got to have you on as a guest sometime if you're going to contribute to the chat. Bar stories of. Oh, wait. Okay. That's actually really the, good. The, That's really good. Yeah. I have one, but I, I, I want oh, somebody else. Oh, no. This needs no, to go. happen. It has to be. I know it's another Disney movie. <laughs> so, The Mirror in. Uh, what's it called? Snow White? Snow White. Yeah. The, the Queen. It needs to be the Queen. She's trapped in the mirror in this reality. <laughs> and because souls and mirroring souls, all that. So I think that might be a good way to incorporate the soulmate pieces of things. Maybe she's trying to redeem herself. And on her podcast, it's actually a self-help podcast. <laughs> there's there's no, something no, in there about irony. Or I, I like, reflection or something like that. Yeah, I either like a self-help podcast about reflections, like Dylan just said, or a maybe like a like a beauty, um, like a how, how to put makeup on kind of thing. But I do like the self-help thing. I think that's yeah. really really cool. So we'll if we're gonna that. go deep with it, I think it has to be that because she's gonna have an intricate part in this. I think. Okay, so and who who is who is trapped inside this magic mirror? It's the evil queen from Snow White. Mm-hmm. Or just the evil queen, period, because we probably shouldn't say from whatever. Oh, it's okay. This, this is going to be a um, uh, generic brand version of this universe. We're just using we're na- we're using all the equivalents here for clarification. Right. So we know. Snow White's blonde. In yes. This cool. Of course. Default okay. queen in the mirror. Yeah. So the main four shows that we have here, we have a werewolf show where they're dealing with horoscopes. We have uh, Sleeping Beauty and. Somehow there's a show about her astro planning. Uh, <laughs> I, I'm, ex- it I'm excited about figuring that out because that's cool. Uh, we have uh, the one where there's uh, bar stories of villains, which is a drunk time edition of how Disney movies have failed. And we now have a magic mirror slash self-help podcast where there's a queen who's trapped in there and who wants people to feel better about themselves. <laughs> now, 
I, I like that. I think that obviously the, uh, the, the the two soulmates would be the evil queen, right? That's one of the soulmate. That's one of the souls. Is that is that fair, Dylan? I think so. Okay. And then the other soul would be Sleeping Beauty, right? And yes. So and they're and they're lovers. Soul okay, lovers. maybe he's a king. Maybe maybe the mirror is actually. Oh, I'm not, I'm not saying can... because of gender. I don't care about that. Oh, okay, uh, yeah. good. No, be, just, yeah, because it doesn't no, matter. The only no. way the only way that Sleeping Beauty can get her podcast out is is by be, having that out of body experience, and, and the magic mirror has to oh, you're way, transcribe way it ahead. for her. That, wow. that, I'm just explaining the logistics of idea. how she would get her podcast out. There. No, I like that. She can only be on other people's podcasts. And right. That's how people hear her stories. Okay. Right, exactly. So she's the one that came up with that idea. She's only a guest okay. on. Right, yeah. Dylan? Mm, nice yeah. one. Only a nice. guest on. Yeah. Nice. Guest on. <laughs> okay. So, <laughs> well, I, I, I was trying to circle back to your failed joke earlier. Yeah. <laughs> well, just let it lie. We're not. Do, we're not oh, doing necromancy. If a dead joke is dead, you let it stay dead. He yeah. resurrected it. And I thought we weren't. Talking I, for, about I forgot about it. I forgot about it. Now I remember. Gaston. <laughs> okay. That's so, right. um, all right. We have these four shows, and then there's a a link. Right. We also need a crime, and I, is the crime that the evil queen put Sleeping Beauty into this coma? Well, mm. It's. It seems like no. all of these hosts are mildly villainous anyway, except for Sleeping Beauty. It's yeah. the Queen in the Mirror. It's Gaston and Jafar. Yeah. It's a bunch of werewolves who aren't necessarily villainous, but in like kind of the Disney ver Disney universe, they strike me as kind. Of so, do we want the crime to be like the last time a hero successfully vanquished a villain? They're coming at it from that point of view. What What's the story that you're thinking? Maybe. Um, you know you. I, I'm asked a specific question, and all the actual examples flee my mind. Um, <laughs> a Disney villain who's vanquished by someone. A dis, uh, like the the guy from Hunchback of Notre Dame. Yeah, yeah. The death of the death of this uh, religious Ursula. figure in France, or Ur Ursula. Did Ursula die? She got stabbed Absolutely. by a boat. Really? In our, she, in our she's reality, down. she died yeah, okay. hard. All right, cool. So, so there is a well, death of something. Black. Right, a death of a death of a of a prominent villain, and then there's true crime podcasts dealing with this death and the conspiracies around this death. Is that right? Yes. Cool. That's All right, great. So, uh, true crime slash conspiracy. You're clear, by the way. Yay! Hell yeah! Oh, read. Don't worry, I'll post this photo up on Instagram later on. Um, okay. Okay. So the conspiracy is that, and we're going with Ursula. Is that cool, or do you want to do that priest know. dude from? Uh, hunchback because he sucks I'm, and he would burn up. I think. I'm trying to think of who is a major villain that the rest of these people would talk about. The equivalent. Uh, you know what I mean? What about like Scar or uh, maybe oh, Hades? Ooh, what if we talk about the mystery of Donkey Island from Pinocchio? Because who knows up what's up with that island? I don't understand that island whatsoever, and no yeah, one ever talks about that island. island. I don't remember that one. What about Cerberus, the three-headed dog from Hercules? Oh, Cere Cere Cerebrus? Cerberus. 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 Oh. But he oh, can't talk. Wanna... He can't talk, so that, I don't know. Anything yeah. can happen here. It's a dog. <laughs> That's true. Anything can happen. <laughs> uh, Dylan, I, I what do you think, think it needs to be... I think that what we're kind of moving towards is that this is a true crime like summit where all these villains are running their podcast. <clears throat> and they're all discussing. I imagine they've all done tie-in episodes to do a mini series, like a big, big like collective series on one particular villain who was vanquished by a hero. But from their point of view, it's like an enterprising individual who fought their way up from the bottom has been taken down by an agitator of some. You know what I mean? Sure. Oh, okay. What about the vampire? That vampire that everybody loves, and his name is. Um... Captain Dracula. Hook? No, not not Dracula. Vampire, one, like something Von something, Van something. Mm. Well, um, Van Hel Van Helsing was a vampire hunter. Yeah, Van Helsing. Okay. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. How about we incorporate? How about he's the one that gets killed? Well, I think what Dylan's saying is that since they're all bad guys, they would oh. want to do a show about a, a popular villain that was thwarted or vanquished, right? Okay. Yeah. yeah. So who, who what what is like a Disney villain that uh, was beat that was very popular? 
It'd be Maleficent, Captain mm. Hook. Ooh. Yeah, that that'd be the most popular. Another queen. I would, I would say the, Maleficent. The Harpy Queen or whatever we're gonna call yeah. her in our public domain Disney universe. The Harpy right. Queen. Maleficent. Maleficent. Yeah. That's you got it. It's there. okay. Male Maleficent. No, yeah, yeah, that's right. You got it. Looks like it is. That's a T. Cruella Deville, she's pitched as like a big Ooh. business leader. Another uh, good one. Yeah, but I, I like Malef I like Maleficent. So let's do it. So there, so there's there, they happen to all be doing a podcast summit. Is that what we're doing? Uh, about those you brought up summit. Some some I did. I wrote it. If that's too close to home, Tina, we don't have to do that. <laughs> that's just like that's in a whole other realm. This this is gonna go on for hours, which I don't mind. But this could go on for hours if we add that whole aspect to everything. It's either, I think it's either a summit or at least these four shows coming together to do some sort of big, like, collective episode on who yeah. brought down Maleficent. They're doing, what if they're just doing a podcast together? Yeah. Yeah, they're doing, like, cross podcasts. Yeah. yeah the guest on like, 250th episode or something, so they're having a whole bunch of guest stars on to talk about it. All right, cool. So we'll... we'll so the, the the intro to this to this world is a podcast gets published over the conspiracies around Maleficent's death. Is that yes? Is that right? Okay. So we'll do the vil the villain cast. Uh, so the villain cast is the first one that goes up, and that's about the conspiracies, and that makes the other podcasts start talking about it, right? And that's what makes uh, yeah. They, they're going behind each other's backs and everybody's confused about who did what and they're talking to each other and all well, of that. I think it would be more of a debate of who would put themselves out there to to um, broadcast this conspiracy. That, that involves a, a very large cover-up that could have a lot of potential characters out to get you. Okay. <laughs> If you if you expose, if you expose no, like the that. truth, no, uh, I like that. So the vill the villains are on their first cast, and they talk about uh, maybe they, they bring up something that no one has thought about when it comes to Maleficent's death, yeah. and they get put onto another show's podcast. And at some point, we got to bring in this soulmate idea. Yeah, which means that they have to get onto either. I mean, that's uh, part of what the, the conspiracy is during that podcast. That's kind of an Easter egg during it, where they bring up that. Uh, somebody says something that sounds like, you know, like they're feeling the vibes for Sleeping Beauty, but it's not even that person that's really her soulmate. Only the magic mirror, magic queen lady can be the one to show her who it is. Cool. So that means that the second show has to be the magic mirror self-help show. Um, and then... We have, I guess, Sleeping Beauty kind of pop into that show, right? Is that right? You know, is it, all right. So the second one is the Mirror Show, and then somehow we explore the fact that there is a uh, Sleeping Beauty is a soulmate of the of the Queen, right? Bill? Well, no, she doesn't have to be the soulmate of the Queen. The, she, the Queen helps her see who her soulmate is. The, oh. the, the mirror is She's the only her. the mirror is the only one that can have communication with Sleeping Beauty through the out of body experience. Yeah, because because that's how the only way she can communicate. She's already floating in a mirror, so we might as well correlate that yeah. as closest to being able to communicate with Sleeping Beauty. Right, and cool. she's who can she's the mirror to who her soul is. Like everybody ends up at the end, actually all being soulmates. Mm. Oh, okay. So. She's a soulmate to everybody. Yeah, that's the twist. Twist. That's the that's the twist well, number three. Let's not give it away. I'm just well, we don't know yet. We're just <laughs> working it out here. All right, so we, we got twist number three ready. <laughs> uh, that's gonna go like right here. Um, okay, so uh, Dylan, where where are we at as far as uh, storytelling here? What what do you see? We have a couple of bridges that we got a link to here. So the main thing right now, I think, is tying all of it together. In, in a conceptual bow. So we have villain podcasts running their individual episodes about the death of Maleficent, mm -hmm. who in this universe, let's say, is like a major like world figure. I'm assuming at this point we're there was a there was a um fan like fan put together kind of setting I read a while ago where the Disney villains all kind of ran the world. So like 
Frollo ran France. Um, the queen, the dragon queen from Sleeping Beauty runs like England, that sort of thing. So this is, I'm kind of getting the feeling that like villain, outright villainy is more of like a standard thing. So these people are just yeah. running podcasts. Yeah. yeah, that's so true. There's only a few good ones left and the whole world, actually, they really respected Maleficent. Yes. Because for some, they got rid of the good mostly. Mm -hmm. And the, the, here's the thing, the, the queen that's in the mirror wants to be good, but she's still kind of evil. Yeah. I mean, she has oh, that God. in her. This, that's why she's still around. This this is a world that that that's run by evil. evil. Good yep. is bad, and bad is good. Yeah. And the oh, ultimate God. reveal should should bring that love back into it. That that's that is hidden within the the messages behind what Sleeping Beauty is trying to tell people. Okay, so it she's seems bring like the love back. The crux, the 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 fulcrum on this seems to be getting Sleeping Beauty awake somehow. Well, yeah. it seems there's a lot of narrative weight put on Sleeping Beauty right here, which is yeah. cool. That's yeah. fine. We need we need we need a catalyst for what the story starts. We need we need like how it starts. We need what the main goal that they're going trying to solve this story is, which seems to be at least at the start figuring out who killed Maleficent or are they yeah. reporting on it after the fact? Well, I think someone broke the news that there is a conspiracy about the death of Maleficent, and that okay. kind of sparked everyone's interest in this, which okay. then, which then is is a throwaway thing. What complete throwaway, really? That's like just the entry into the world. And then we're going to yeah. pop into the fact that Sleeping Beauty is astral planning into a magic mirror, and we need to wake her up so that she can find her soulmate. Yeah, which also is nobody. Um, which, but then that, which and everybody will bring love back to this. To this universe, Rob really yeah, okay. wants that love there. That's no, that's good. okay. No, no that's yeah, good. That's fine. No, that's what I'm saying. No, we're gonna work love into here. Love is. Yeah. Oh, there we go. A big yeah, heart. It is a world full of villains. Right after twist number three is when the love's gonna show up. Um, <laughs> and so everyone's evil, and the only good podcasts out there are run by Hercules and Bill Burr. I would assume. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. Uh, double B. <laughs> exactly. All right. Cool. Um, all right, Dylan. So let let's get to. What is, so we know that, what is the story, what is the actual substance of the story look like? Is it a bunch of people as a group going out and trying to find out what happened? Is it a bunch of independent people kind of individually piecing it together? Is it one person going from group to group and kind of piecing it together? Who do we follow in this? So I would think that the mirror... Somehow Sleeping Beauty in the mirror has information that we need, which yes. is why the mirror gets on all these shows. Um, okay. And then it goes, maybe maybe there's a show before the self-help show. Um, but somehow like the, the mirror has to kind of pop in here a couple times first. And then we get to the fact of like, oh yeah, by the way, she's trapped. We should probably get her out of here. And then that turns into maybe more of the story. Um, getting her out to f to solve the mystery of the Maleficent death, um, but ultimately so that she can get back to knowing what love is. Like maybe, okay. maybe so, um, they're trying to transport the magic mirror, you know, by, by sea or wh however far they have to take her to get to these podcasts to be able to guess on them, so that she can reveal some of this hidden information that she knows. I'm I'm still stuck on the reason that Sleeping Beauty is the, and is is the key. She doesn't have to be, but she could be a very oh, yeah. important part of it. And I think that maybe Jafar and Gaston are sitting at the bar doing their podcast, and the werewolf happens to be there writing up his horoscopes for his next episode, and he overhears them talking about it, and that's how they figure out the conspiracy of Maleficent. Yeah, I, but I think what Dylan is, I, I think what we need to figure out is what the what the story is, because I, I do like I do like that a lot. Um, but is It'll is come the, together. I, I know, <laughs> um, but we yes, but that's what we're doing right now is making it come together. So we need to. So is the story that we got to get Sleeping Beauty out of the mirror? Is that the, <laughs> she is, needs to wake up? Yeah, right. That that's the ultimate story. Okay, she right? needs she needs to wake up. Because yeah. for somehow truth. reuniting her with someone, yeah, is going to give people the ability to shake the villain's hold on everything. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. Does that make does that scam? Right. I, I'm I'm kind of into the idea of her and Maleficent or her and the evil queen kind of having that soulmate bond. Yes. And uh maybe Maleficent is is the soulmate. And that's why we need to get Sleeping Beauty awake or out of the mirror uh, astral plane or something. Out of the Matrix? Yeah, out of, out of the Disney Matrix. Okay, I think that maybe, yes, Maleficent, because she's the complete opposite of Sleeping Beauty, and there's the conspiracy that she's maybe dead or something. Um, and then that's where you guys can do resurrection stuff. And you can have Is multiple soulmates. You, you can have multiple soulmates. You can. So it could be a, 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 a soulmate triangle. But but the main ones I think should be Maleficent and Sleeping Beauty because they're complete polar opposites. And where is Maleficent? And they're all trying to figure it out. And she was the one that was beloved by all of the evil others and is the only one that can break her out of that spell. But she refuses to love her because she wants to be so evil. And the mirror evil queen is trying to also in turn help she was helping Maleficent with her self-help podcast. Okay, so Sleeping Beauty and Maleficent were a couple. And then whatever happened to make Maleficent go away also put Sleeping Beauty into this trance and allowed her to Asho uh, plane through this mirror. Now, the magic mirror evil lady also liked Maleficent and found out about this little love thing. And she's ultimately the reason why Maleficent is gone and why Sleeping Beauty is stuck into the mirror and why she's the only one that can speak for Sleeping Beauty and have her, you know, words spoken. What do you think, Dylan? We kind of converged on that without speaking. Yeah, I'm kind of, I kind of hit the same plot points where Maleficent and Sleeping Beauty shared whatever, we can call it a... Soulmate, soul sort bond, of, a force dyad, um, whatever we're gonna call it. Maleficent and Sleeping Beauty were kind of like equal ends of the spect of the fulcrum, yeah. where one of them is gone, so things are out of balance. Yes. So we need to restore one of them or both oh, of them. Both. Okay. Both of okay. Them. So then. I'm stuck on. Huh. All right. So I think the first arc. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. No, this is just completely un. Dylan, you're failing me right now. <laughs> I'm. Don't, don't need okay. to point that out right now. No. Okay. You're doing so, it's great. so complex first, right now. The, the first. Hard. No, it, no, it's fine. We, this is what we need to, to get better. That's um, what we do. The first arc is finding out that. Uh, that Maleficent and Sleeping Beauty were a couple through these weird true crime podcasts. So that's the right? conspiracy. That That's right. part of it. That's one of them. Cool. Yeah, okay. And then the second arc is finding out that the evil queen is the reason for Sleeping Beauty and Maleficent to have gone away. Is that is that a good second arc? I think so. I'm not a huge fan of the queen. I, I think we should make it a little less anticipated as to who actually got rid of Maleficent. Someone a little, a little more out of left field. Maybe the make werewolf? it a hero figure. Werewolf might work. Or Jafar. Um, it could Jafar did it all to engineer the perfect story for his podcast. Yeah, his podcast yeah. was his podcast needed uh listeners and he had to get rid of the queen to get a good first podcast and, and get some listeners. That's mm. right, because they're hanging out at the bar talking about their podcast. And mm. he, they're kind of the ones that drop the knowledge about the what's going on to they realized, the werewolf who yep. picked up on it. So cross makes cross promotion sense. was not enough. Yeah, they had to do something deeper. Yeah, exactly. who who is the primary delivery for the story to the audience? Who's the character? Who are we following through this primary? The mirror, mostly the mirror. Re- no, I think it should be one of the podcasts. I think it should either okay. be the villain cast or the werewolf cast. I think okay. werewolf makes the most sense because in a horoscope, he's pretty much telling everyone what's going to happen, but Ooh. you have to pay attention yeah. to what he's yeah. saying in his podcast. Yeah, in like order that. to follow what's going on. He has the divine answers. Yeah, he doesn't even know it. He's just doing horoscopes, making a couple bucks here and there, and then <laughs> off of teeth. <laughs> okay, so uh, we're going to say this is a window, just so you guys know. <laughs> um, wow. Yeah, so. uh, hey, hey, chill out. It's a window. Trust me. It looks like okay. a recliner. <laughs> I, I can't see that. Um, okay, so the, the werewolf, uh, the werewolf podcast about horoscopes is the window character into this cool. story, and we're going to find out that Maleficent 
who was the most badass queen of all time, is now missing or dead or something. The first way we find out about this is by the podcast of the villains, and they are forming it as a conspiracy as to what happened. Are, is that cool, Dylan? All right, excellent. And then we're going to follow a, a couple different podcasts using the mirror and Sleeping Beauty, and we're going to get at some point we're going to get to finding out about Sleeping Beauty and Maleficent being a couple, right? I don't know how that's going to happen. I'm guessing through some podcasts or something. Probably yeah. through the three fairy godmothers. Mm. Okay. Oh yeah. At some point, maybe now that Sleeping Beauty has like grown up and is no longer in need of them, or she's dead or disappeared. As far as I know, she's gone. Um, now they're she sad. ran away from home. She she came yeah. awake again, but went back to sleep. <laughs> 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 or I'm or, kidding. or R Rafiki from Lion King cracked up in his little oh, man. And, and saw the painting on the wall. <laughs> and that's how you know who's bad and good. They have the red lines on their yeah. faces. There you go. Oh, that's funny. Um, but I definitely think that the second arc should get down to the reveal that Jafar was right. the, uh, he, he he was the bad one, uh, maybe through leftover genie powers or whatever. What do you got, Dylan? The overall bad guy simply trying to cause chaos is Chernabog from Fantasia. Who? Who? Oh, wow, okay. Um, he's Fantasia. So you can't Fantasia. just drop Chernabog. <laughs> yes, I can. Fantasia is the, the movie from the 1940s. It's almost entirely it. instrumental. It's great. Chernabog yeah. is the big demon oh, gargoyle the demon. of the mountain. Oh. He's just the big I, he's the night and ball mountain thing. Good idea. Okay, he's so what, literally a demon. Yeah, so what, what's his role in this? I figure he's the instigator of everything. Maybe he's the guy who drops uh, speaking hypo, speaking like, you know, myth, mythological, he's the guy who drops the rose at the banquet that causes everybody to kind of like vie for power. I don't know. I I've, I've been playing a lot of Hades, a lot of Greek mythology has been on my mind recently. Uh, so I'm thinking of like Paris. Yeah, I but yeah, Chernobog is the one who throws everything out of whack by instigating things behind the scenes, simply to cause chaos. So, so is this? So Jafar is not the one that did this. Is this, we're going to go with Cherubog? Jafar could be working with him. Maybe, yeah, okay, cool. maybe they're in cahoots. I hate that word. I love Me too. It. Because he's like their podcast producer or something. Oh, <laughs> that's you know that's really good actually. That's he's the producer of everybody's podcast. Yeah, he's like he's Spotify. <laughs> Jafar is. Uh, in cahoots. Yeah, um, Jafar's like, anchor. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that. I didn't want to say it. <laughs> I was going to say he's Scott Ackerman. Of, <laughs> of, of <laughs> We're all in the same wavelength then. Okay, so Dill, what, what what's the story looking like now? So, Disney World, whatever world this is, is in chaos because two of the anchor characters, Maleficent, who ran some <laughs> large region of the world, has disappeared or died. Uh, and in the meantime, Sleeping Beauty has also disappeared. There are villains in various areas. They've kind of gotten bored due to all the good guys falling out of favor, not really doing much. They're being outnumbered. So some of them have podcasts. There is a werewolf horoscope writer who is in a bar, and he overhears uh, Jafar and some of his podcast people talking about doing an episode on the Maleficent Conspiracy. And then across the course of it, we learn that Maleficent and Sleeping Beauty are kind of like the um, soulmate version of Neo and Agent Smith, where like <laughs> one of them is gone, the other one it throws them out of balance, something like that. We but learn that Jafar is Beauty was gone too. What's up? Didn't you just say Sleeping Beauty is also gone? I think they are. Yeah, we're they're yeah. both gone. Yeah. Okay. I don't think people notice Sleeping Beauty is gone at first. Oh. I think everybody's focused on Maleficent, and then they're like. Well, that's yeah, weird. That's Sleeping Beauty's right. gone too. Well, she's not gone. She's been on a bunch of podcasts. And yeah, then, yeah, she can from um, wherever she is. <laughs> um, and we learned that there was some sort of entanglement between the two, and that her disappearance was instrumented by Jafar working on behalf of Chernabog in order to throw the world into further chaos. Maybe cool. Maleficent was kind of like the reasonable authority figure where nobody messes with the dragon. And then the dragon's gone, so there's a power vacuum. Okay. So that all sounds really good. I sort of think maybe the um, 
Maleficent and Sleeping Beauty are actually together. They've broken out of the Matrix. They have Astro Plane together to another existence where Sleeping Beauty still can podcast from there. Mm -hmm. And that's what it is. Maleficent is able to travel travel, <laughs> travel back and forth between realities. And she's actually watching everybody else, seeing what's going on and reporting it back to Sleeping Beauty, who ends up being the queen in the end and breaks everybody out of the Matrix. And they're all loving people again. Well, they, most of them never were, but they become loving. And then they realize they're all soulmates. <laughs> did, did you get, did you write that down, Dylan? I'm writing down something. <laughs> okay. Maybe one piece at a time. Sorry. No, no, no that's right. it's a good that's a good ending to this, I think. I like yeah. I really like the idea that Maleficent and Sleeping Beauty are in on it together. The I think that's a really good beauty. approach. They're just taking a vacation. They're either taking yeah. or Maleficent just got tired of being the authority figure and she's just like, hey, let's go. We can do we can leave. We can leave so, whatever you want. So there was no villainous push to begin with? Maybe I think Jafar probably took advantage of it and maybe claimed responsibility at a certain point, mm -hmm. but honestly doesn't know what happened. So and they, you have the big reveal where they confront Jafar somehow, and he goes, I don't know what happened. I didn't wish for this. The I just feel the that, that you were talking about. Maybe mm -hmm. he put Noble. he put Maleficent into that position of power. So it's actually like he's the catalyst for everything that happened and his own downfall. Because putting Maleficent in power and then Maleficent realizing that she and Sleeping Beauty, you know, had a thing, kind of kind of pushed everything the way it went in order for them to break out of the matrix to break the rest of them out of the matrix. And then he's defeated. Okay. So the villain cast at the very beginning, the people that are at the bar, they're drunk and bragging about getting rid of Maleficent and sleeping beauty, even though they didn't do it. They're just yeah. saying they did it for listenership. Oh, yeah. For, okay, cool. And what actually <laughs> happened was that sleeping beauty and Maleficent dipped on the world to have like this little naked vacation, which totally cool. With that. <laughs> And Maleficent would pop back into this fake re uh, reality to drop podcasts, letting. Wait, wait, I, I that that part I don't understand. But let, let's get back to that. Why was Maleficent coming back into this universe? She's, she's, she's checking she's, in on what's happening. So she's she going to report back. She's to sleeping dropping beauty. subliminals through podcasts. Podcasts that she's guesting on. But that she's Sleeping not, Beauty no, is no, in no, an out missing. of is in an astral jail. That is also symbolic you just of change the, whole the matrix. Story. And then when you when, when you break <laughs> Sleeping Beauty out of this astral projected jail, then you the parallel universes mold back together. No. There is no longer parallels. Well, I think and I think it's not <laughs> what the story is. <laughs> it's a lot. It's, it's okay. a lot to follow. <laughs> I think I think that the the magic mirror with the ability of seeing both of them or one of them is uh, is a good bridge to that astro mm. world. I okay. don't necessarily know if Maleficent should be popping in and out just to report. That seems okay. kind of weird because if somebody sees her, then they go, "Well, she's not dead," you know, because that's she's right here. We just saw okay. her. So There's I think a lot that, of elements here. Well, the conspiracy think, <laughs> never had to be that she was actually dead. Well, if she's gone, that's a conspiracy. But if she's still there, then she's not gone. Right. Right. Okay. Well, that's only if they see her. But I guess we're talking about podcasts. So yeah, you're right. Oh, I, I I'm just trying to understand the story here. <laughs> so much. I have it all in my brain. <laughs> uh, okay, then, then give it to me again, start to finish. Oh man. Okay. You, you be the Dylan here, Dylan. Tina out. No, I want Dylan to be the Dylan right now. <laughs> but but I but so far I think you're the only one that can see this story as it. Oh, okay. Well, cool. Dylan left. I don't that's have awesome. a whiteboard yet. <laughs> You, you can use use my way board. <laughs> okay, yeah, so we have no, no, I'm kidding. No, I like this story. I think this is cool. Um, so we have that, and then we have uh Sleeping Beauty and Maleficent are popped out of existence. I think that's very, very cool. I think Jafar uh owning up to it and saying that it was a, his thing to push his podcast, I think is very cool. Um, I think the reveal uh, that uh Jafar actually didn't do it, he's like just a punk, I think and is he's really so embarrassed. cool. Yeah, he's very embarrassed. Uh, I think that's a really cool third twist that we talked about here towards the end is the Jafar truth. Um, and then we're going to is is Maleficent and Sleeping Beauty going to just 
come back and be like, listen, we were just leave us yeah. alone. <laughs> They're gonna break everyone out of the matrix <laughs> with the fact that somebody like Maleficent, who is in such power, would be with somebody who everybody else saw as sleeping, right? So yeah. they break everyone out. The cloud is the veil is lifted. Because we're using stuff like astral projection, sure. so we have to use that yeah. term. So the veil's lifted. The devil guy is put into some kind of psychic jail forever. And they just go about their lives all doing self-help podcasts. Um, so what if what if Maleficent and Sleeping Beauty left of their own volition and then Jafar convinced Chernobyl to like lock the door behind them? And it's, about getting them, back, and it's about getting them back into this world. A metaphysical they, door? Yeah. yeah. Yes. So we're in the astral plane. Okay. Yes. So it's a terra okay. core. Okay. Yeah. I like that. That's cool. That's really good. So that should um, be the end. Is is Chernobyl should be Chernobyl lo locked away or, oh, or a giant or concrete shell gets yeah. his his, te uh, his tether cut from oh, his yeah. physical body and he's just floating in the astral plane forever. Untethered soul to his doom. What, uh, Dill? What do you think are some weird scenes to go in this kind of middle part though? He's a good actor. Yeah, okay. we need to fill time. Yeah, are we or are we present? Are we format? Are we pretending that this is going to be a an actual in our world podcast? If we were going to produce this, are we producing this as a podcast, or should I describe this like a movie? I think it should be more movie based. I don't. I don't okay. think the way it goes anymore makes sense yeah. for a podcast. Yeah. So I think it's okay. just a, it's, it's a movie about podcasts. Totally. So the werewolf is the main character. Cool. I'm seeing the werewolf kind of. Visiting, let's see. There needs to be the moment where he hunts down the three fairy godmothers, and we find out Sleeping Beauty's childhood wasn't. She wasn't an easy kid to raise. Maybe she was always oh, asked, all messed up. Yeah, the, yeah. All, the, all the godmothers are all screwed up in the head at this point. <laughs> yeah, and they're like like bedraggled, smoking cigarettes. Yeah, they're smoking and, yeah. genie potions and stuff. Yeah, in like, particular okay. because their uh, their charge has left the world, so their magic has nowhere to go. Um, Aww. maybe. He goes to, I'm trying to pull, we seem to be setting this in like a fable. We're setting this in like a fable style, like fairy tale crossover world. Yeah, right. it definitely seems almost like a Shrek verse. Yeah. Okay, yeah. <laughs> Except, yeah, um, the werewolf's actually also a lawyer, but he's also a psychic mm, that yeah. writes horoscopes. And and so he's able to track down the godmothers because of that, because he sure. can use a subpoena on them. Could be a cop. <laughs> And he's that's what, the godmothers. Uh, we're getting we're getting real close. If we make him a cop, we're getting really close to actual fables, where he's the the, de the sheriff. No, of what, yeah, no cop yeah. lawyer. <laughs> so I love I love fables. It's oh, yeah. my favorite graphic novel series, but that's getting pretty close. Yeah, that, <laughs> so that the, is too. Exactly. So the wolves the wolves track down the godmothers, and that's when they find out that Sleep Beauty and Maleficent were actually a couple, right? Yeah, yeah. That's, it's, that's a, it's at make... least alluded to. All right. So then, what happens in this in the second third? Of uh of the movie because I think once we know that they're a couple and once we have the idea that the godmothers are like tweaked out old ladies now, um, we got I don't to. Think we, I don't think we find that out until the end of the second act. I think the second act is operating under the assumption that something happened to Maleficent, mm -hmm. and okay. we need a red herring character who we can blame. Uh, could be Ursula if we want to like bring in like land versus sea stuff. Well, that's why I wanted Ursula somewhere in there. Yeah. yeah, I also thought we would use the evil queen who has this mirror. She would be mean, obviously yeah. the, the very obvious red herring because, like, well, you have her trapped in there. Mm -hmm. like, oh, no, no, no. that's that's, that's, that's a good point. That'd be the only way to incorporate the mirror. I think this is yeah, a there's chance. So many places it's, to incorporate her. Huh? The mirror, right. well, Sleeping Beauty can get messages through the mirror, but it's not very clear or like consistent. I think yeah. where it's sure. it's like picking up a radio signal on your walkie-talkie. Right. The, the, the mirror is still a little. The mirror is speaking very cryptically. Yeah. Oh, it's like cr it's cracked or something. Yeah, yeah. It's cracked. That's why she does her self help podcast. She's trying to help others while helping herself, but she's kind of blurry and it, foggy, a little it's bit not cracked, good help. so she can't always see properly. It's not yeah. good help because none of them can feel good. Yeah, right. <laughs> exactly. She's trying though. So that's why she's cracked out. I'm, I'm, no! seeing, <laughs> I'm seeing Gaston being involved, and maybe he's hunting the werewolf down because he's part beast. And the second act is like that cat and mouse game. So this this is the werewolf kind of versus Gaston and then yeah. somehow that that leads them to the fairy godmothers that are now tweaked out on fairy dust and yeah. are just like selling stories uh for whatever reason. Yeah. So action 
there. An action scene? Yeah. A chase scene? So wolves v. Gaston. And then maybe the godmother's like, save the wolf. Okay. Or whatever. Yeah. So there has to be like a super snitch. Like who knows actually everything? Who is aware uh, of everything? I say Jafar, Jafar is the one who is, he's like the, yeah. the, the big B word. He's, he's the he's, big yeah. the puppet. Yeah. 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 He's the one who's like, no, I did. I killed Maleficent. And like, no, you actually did not Yeah. Uh, he, he's look dumb Jafar. He, he's carrying he's out the dark plans. <laughs> You're looking a fool, Jafar. Um, okay, so then then we get the reveal that Jafar actually did not do anything. Um, he's just a punk, but knows some more stuff. Yeah. And somehow we got to get from there to Jafar reveal the truth about Sarabog and then getting over to true love and breaking the Matrix. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to think who's like an ultimate good figure in Disney slash folklore. Peter Pan. Aladdin. Jiminy Jiminy Cricket. Oh, Peter Pan. Oh, no. Jiminy Cricket versus Jana Bob. There's only so much he can do. <laughs> Robin Hood. Robin sure. Robin Fox Hood would be a part. Robin Hood could take the werewolf to Fairy Godmothers in their like forest hut. He saves yep. him from Gaston. Yeah, they're like on the way forest, to get a yeah. uh, ground up tooth from the tooth fairy dust, and they just decide. You know, I was thinking the great we'll go with this. A, a great trek like Peter Pan takes Captain Hook's ship and oh. travels oh, yeah. across. That's the, good too. Yeah, the really Pacific cool. Ocean right. of fairy tales. Nice. All right, Dylan, what do you think? Either one. I don't see why we can't include a fair amount of that if we're looking at like this is kind of a globe trotting thing anyway. Um, so. They're Let's friends see. with Peter Pan. Peter Pan and his friends with Robin Hood at this yeah. point. So well, Robin Hood can be in the forest or on a ship. I feel like the forest excursion would, would be too slow. Are they like a resistance? Are they like a, a resistance force yeah. to these villains' rules? So all of the good guys who are still here are working together? Yeah. They're the ones yeah. with Rafiki's mark. They're the anonymous. Anonymous <laughs> is, yeah, with the Rafiki, with the Rafiki the graphics. And the whole thing start. The whole thing starts with one of the podcasts of the Wolf Horoscope telling pretty much his whole story uh, in like some vague weird terms. And the end, the ending, like the final act, can be them trying to take the genie's lamp from Jafar's palace, and then they use that wish to bring Maleficent and Sleeping Beauty back. Yep. And then Maleficent's power allows them to fight off Chernabog and kind of like, <gasps> yeah. Okay. And then love. And then love yes. happens. And then love yes. happens. And then love happens because, you know, just like the mirror, her mirror, the evil queen's mirror becomes unfoggy again and just like replenishes. And she's able to mirror the love of Maleficent and Sleeping Beauty to everyone. Mm, yeah. And she shows that what it could be like. And they all break out of the Matrix and realize they're all soulmates. Yep, the mirror oh. just lights up the entire glow. Earth. See, the aura of the mirror is on fleek. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Okay, so the <laughs> okay, so the main people of this of this movie are the uh, a couple werewolves, yeah, uh, Gaston and Jafar, uh, a mirror and the evil queen, and who else? Robin Hood at some point. Though. They'll have their seg they'll have their segment. We get yeah, we get okay. the idea that the world goes on beyond this story where it's like Robin Hood is like, Well, when we when we lost brother little John in that raid on the sheriff's <laughs> yeah. castle. He did, he, just, extra he just joins important. in at the end like a lot of action movies where yeah. they have a specific action role, role where they're like oh, the cavalry you. comes in and it's Robin Hood and his Merry Men and yeah. uh Peter Pan the Lost Boys, but like the hook lost boys. <laughs> yeah. Anybody so, with decency joins forces. Yeah. yeah. If, if you want to be part of this new world, you're going to join forces. So the mm -hmm. big, the big battle at the very end is Maleficent dragon form versus Sarabog, uh, straight up yeah. demon form. And that is to prove that love needs to exist, uh, in all forms. Yes. Is that true? Including giant dragon versus demon. All right. Excellent. Um, so, uh, <laughs> Tina and Rob, <laughs> Nothing says love like a big old fight at the end of the movie. Yeah, yeah. it's a real just dark violent. CGI battle in the middle of the night. Make them just, kill each other off yeah, and just they, have everybody else be the love. They like, both need they to go. They have they, it in them at all. They both need to go. You can't 
violence and violence does not make love, so they both need to go. So yeah. sure. Sleeping Beauty's left alone after her soulmate dies. No, because yeah. everybody now everyone's broken out of the matrix. That oh, okay, they're up. I mean, yeah, everybody or, is now awake. It gives them that realization in, in the correct plane of existence too. Or it just ends with Sleeping Beauty walking off into the sunset with the mirror talking to Maleficent, who's now only Astro Plane. <laughs> or everybody's holding it hands, could, yeah. walking off into the distance together. It could be just, a, it's just hilarious. a mind F. Uh, oh, just, figure it out, people. Choose your own conclusion. <laughs> yeah. You make uh, your own decisions on it this. It zooms out and it's Sam Neill watching the movie in a movie theater. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and he's like, huh, that would be crazy, wouldn't it? That's um, deep. Dylan, what scene do you want to see out of this? What, what what scene do you think would be the most impactful if you had to write a scene from all this? I kind of lean towards the revelation with the fairy godmothers. I feel like there's a lot of uh, fun dialogue you could have where mm. the revelation slowly comes about. And then yeah. there's that moment where you realize exactly what happened. And, you know, you have that, you, you share that with the characters and your shock. I love it. Could um, be a really you, trippy. Uh, what's that Johnny Depp movie? Uh, a Fear and Living uh, type scene. A really trippy one. <laughs> all of it. I mean, I feel like all of the. I I can't really convey what's happening in my own brain like most of us can't. But like, I feel like all of this could, if this was a real film, would be super colorful. And we'd have to have some musical pieces that are parody, oh, yeah. almost parody. Like, but super colorful especially when they break out of the matrix and then it could go further but this is like oh there's gonna really, be colors really throughout good. yeah mm. no i know i love it <laughs> uh, you up. names we, we need some names for this uh what, what do you guys think for a name for this project hmm. dylan you're the name guy what do you think Am I? no you like but you can be that. you're due uh, I do my best sometimes. Um, <laughs> oh, man. So we're, we're not... Would we pitch this to Disney as a villain crossover for them? Like, no. would, okay, this is going to be a straight mythology folklore sort of thing instead? Yeah, yeah I think so. It ever be Disney. We, we would need to tweak it a little bit. I know that Disney has recently released that they want all their main characters to be POCs or female. Um, so most of the story would fit into what they're trying to do. Um, I think that big battle at the very end would probably be the big discouraging thing for them. Yeah. Um, but if we were to pitch this to Disney, what kind of <laughs> end would you like to have? Uh, I mean, I guess, I guess a battle's fine. I mean, it is two two bad people, so it's, um, it's too, out of, once they fight, they could become like human or another form of existence. Yeah. Well, I was gonna say it's two villainous non-human characters, so they're probably a little more. They'd be a little more willing to have them actual actually fight because I think Disney's a little cagey about having like people commit violence against each other on screen. Yeah, but if you hurt a monster, exactly. monsters don't count. Yeah. Monsters um, and robots don't count. Neither do aliens. Um, right, so splice with all the names, like what the main characters splice splice those names together. I think to, the message is more important than the names. It of the is. Characters. But we got to think about the names of Disney movies too, um, and their format. And they're all the, the characters. What's that? Most, are they? Aren't most Disney films named after the characters? Just exactly. Like, that's Cinderella, Moana, Sleeping Beauty, yeah. uh, yeah. Beauty and the Beast. Yeah, there's so many characters that I feel like Sleeping yeah. Beauty and the Beast. Sleeping Beauty. No, it doesn't make any, no. doesn't make any sense. <laughs> um, Sleeping Beauty and the Beast. Um, I don't know. We can get back to that. We're, we're going to keep yeah. calling this. We're going to keep calling a soulmate until then. Um, yeah. But we are actually out of time. So uh, thank you guys so much from Psychedelic Podcast. You have Robert and Tina Marie Trumper. Thank you, guys. We really appreciate you hanging out. Thank you to International Broadcast Media Television for letting all of us just chat and ramble and really talk about uh, weird Disney creatures and some werewolves for a while. Um, <laughs> if you want to see what we're doing, if you want to see the progression of how this weird story is going to go, you can always go to www.somenobodies.com. If you want to help us make things like possibly this i have no idea but we're trying to make a bunch of stuff in the future you can always go to patreon.com backslash uh some nobodies and 
really help us out. The people that do help us out, you got Scott Curtis from Behind the Bits. That guy is awesome. Check out that podcast if you're into interviews, if you're like comedians. Uh, Scott Curtis is super cool. You have Tanya Sheck. You have uh, Sarah Tukacic. You have Listener App. If you like to go uh, and uh, read words instead of listening to podcasts for some reason, Listener App is where you would do it. Just go to Instagram at the greatest podcast app. Uh, Dylan Terry, my best Hi. friend and my co-writer. Yeah. I appreciate you, man. Thank you very much. It. Uh, yeah, you spend your time with me and that's cool. And you come up with this very cool Aww. stuff. Um, but, uh, Robert and Tina Marie, do you guys want to uh, send us out? Do you want to say anything, pitch yourselves, sell anything? I don't care. Let's do that. Uh, well, I think it's about you guys. You guys have the most creative and individual show that I've ever seen. I love it. And it was really a joy, individual? a joy to be a part of it. And, um, I know it got really confusing. My brain was kind of, um, that's it's brainstorming. It's supposed it's to be confusing. A, yeah, that's my, what this process my is. brain was constantly trying to catch up the whole time, and that's what that's what makes your guys' show so unique. And um, I think definitely keep going where you're going, and this could be one of the greatest shows of all time. For sure, I think it already is. But what I will push is Indie Pods United, where if you are a fellow podcaster, in July I plan to do another one. So. And a, a few amazing people as well, or they'll be helping. So IndiePauseUnited.com, if you want to watch over 80 hours of live streaming podcasts, they were included. Zach drinks hot sauce. And um, so much stuff happened. We had a lot of amazing performances. Some of it was done in Zoom. So in the future, know to buy your tickets before it's too late. If you mm -hmm. want to take a really, really cool like headliners. We had Luke Knoll. We had people like Doc Brass. And... If you like, you know, finger drumming, it's super cool. Mm -hmm. So um, IndiePodsUnited.com, July. And then if you do want to check us out, the Psyche Dash Delic podcast, spelled like that, but with the word cast at the end of it. Yeah, what happened there? And I'm Tina Marie. I did that because I didn't know if it was going to like shorten it for me. Um. So I shortened it myself. <laughs> so I'm Tina Marie. This is Rob Trimpert. And we appreciate you guys. You guys are awesome. Keep it up. And Zach will be on our show again next week <laughs> <laughs> and hopefully yeah, that, at some point if you want I'll to get on, yeah. hey, whenever you want me on there i'm i'll come on and talk about nutty conspiracy stuff yeah, whenever keeps, you want man just let us know all right yeah he keeps asking me i was like just ask them i don't know whatever <laughs> <laughs> all right, guys that's it thank you very much until next time we are some nobodies bye all right see you guys bye. thank you Thank you.